Because if I can get through it, I'm going to I'm going to try and do two different uh, candlesticks today. Um, the first one I'm going to do is um, this one here. Okay, this is a traditional colonial. Um, yeah, this. Yeah, this one is just a plain pedestal. You get a you know, a fancy candle, you can set it on there, nothing, nothing really tough to this, just a solid piece of wood. This, you know, is that Rudio Selnik type. This is fairly easy to do. The trick on this one, though, this is weighted, okay? This is full of BBs in order to keep it from tipping over. So I'm not sure I can really do it on this lathe. There may not be enough uh, space to do it, but I brought the BB just in case. Um, so this two-piece one is very stable, fairly easy to do. Oh, the last one, yes. So if you aren't so inclined to uh, to sit down and do something like this, and you have a bottle stopper blank, you can turn the bottle stopper blank by drilling a seven-eighths hole in it and make yourself a, a little uh, candle holder, empty your bottle, <laughs> and you get yourself a, uh, a candle holder like that, and it doesn't take any time, and you can really appreciate it. <laughs> but, After the bottle? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, this one, pretty straightforward. Just took a, um, a blank, did it fairly round on the bandsaw, drilled a two inch hole. So I'm just going to do it in expansion mode here. And actually, I'm going to use bowl gouge for this. Okay, so I'm, I'm just wanting to square up the edge here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a one inch hole in here and then leave a little bit of space for the diameter at the base, all right? And then, um, so I can just fit it in. Okay. So you can do whatever kind of profile you like. I like to make a little raised part in the center, come down to the step. Okay, because I'm going to glue that in, it doesn't have to be all that deep.
And I just want to make sure that that surface is nice and square. not too bad. I'm going to sharpen up this step here. <coughs> and you can do whatever kind of decoration you'd like. If you prefer to have a bead around that base, that's fine too. Okay, I'm just doing a, a slope. It's a little different than that one. I'm not going to sand this much because it's water. I think you're all talking. Okay, so that's the the base. And if I wanted, I'm not going to take the time to do it, although I brought the chuck. I used my pin jaws um, on my G3 chuck, all right, and I'll, that'll, this, these chuck, these, um, uh, they'll fit into a one inch hole, okay. So all I got to do is close that down, put it in there, and then I can turn the bottom, put a relief in. I normally don't have to drill a hole this deep. I did it this time just to give me a little bit more hole. But you can hollow out the bottom and get yourself a nice, stable bottom. For right now, I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to glue it together until I can fix it up at home. All right? But that's what I use, the, the uh, pin jaws on a small G3. Now. I have to do, um, on this one, this is my blank for the step, uh, and the, what I'll have to do is turn a one inch tenon at one end, all right, and I'll have to drill a hole for the candle at the other end. And the typical hole for the candle is seven eighths, although seven eighths for some candles is a little bit, um, is a little bit big so you'll have to check the candles that you have some some candles would fit into actually about a, a 16th less than, than 7 8 but 7 8 is the standard the other thing you can do is you can take a 7 8 inch spade bit and taper it okay all I did was run this against the grinder and you can see that it tapers this way and this way all right so it gives yourself a tapered hole, and that fits the bottom of the candle a little bit better because it's got a little bit of a taper in it. Now the Elizabeth's land. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. That explains why it does that. <laughs> in the chuck is the bottom. That doesn't have to be the exact size of the diameter of the hole you just did. It the will be. Oh, okay. All right. I got, I'll, take it re, I'll take it back out again and do it between centers. Uh, but I need to be able to support it just by this end to drill this to hole. hole. Okay. All right. doing it be in the chuck and actually um, just doing it instead of doing it between centers and I will tell you that between centers you're getting a little bit close in fact why don't I just for the sake of time why don't I just do it back in the chuck I'll just make it a little shorter than I had before and what I was meaning by the spur center on most of the spur centers is almost an inch in diameter. So when you're coming down and making that tenon, you're getting pretty close to, to that size. Conveniently, that fits right in there. And now it's just a matter of um, trying to look at the, the diameter that I'd like it to be. Pretty close, so I'm 